So on this episode, I am going to grade the automatic boost to the Communities Act, which is just a proposal offered up for the next Phase 4 stimulus program. But with Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats offering their total proposal soon, I don't have that much time to grade these, so I figured I'd throw it out now. I've already graded Mitt Romney's plan, which was Patriot Pay. If you want to see that episode, I will leave you a link below. So if you want, join me on this and you could see if you agree with the way that I'm going to grade it. And these are the categories. Number one, will it stimulate the economy? Number two, is it necessary? Number three, is it reasonable as far as the cost is concerned? Number four, does it incentivize correctly? Number five, will the plan work as written? Number six, can it be done fast? And then I will give it a total grade by the end of the episode. It will earn either 0% to 100%, either an F or an A+. Plus. And then at the end of the episode, I will tell you the positives of this plan, the negatives of this plan, and how it should be rewritten. So first, let's talk about the basics. This is proposed by Rashida Tlaib and Pramila Jayapal, and they are both Democrats. And the basics of this plan say this. All who qualify would receive a preloaded boost debit card with $2,000 for each qualifying family member. The card would then be preloaded every month with 1,000 more for each qualifying member. This would continue this reloading of $1,000 every month until one full year after the end of the COVID-19 crisis, which would obviously be determined by the government. So who would qualify? Every person residing within the borders of the United States. Also, all those who are living in American territories and protectorates abroad, and all Americans residing in other countries, all taxpayers and non-taxpayers, all men, women, and children, all dependents, all legal citizens, and those who are here illegally. So in totality, the number is hard to quantify, but it's probably something like 350 million individuals. Here is an example of what this plan would look like. David is a teacher who works from home now that schools are shut down. His wife is a stay-at-home mom, and they have two children. On July 1st, he will receive a boost card preloaded with $8,000 on it, $2,000 for each of the different family members. On August 1st, another $4,000 is loaded onto the card, an additional $1,000 for each of the family members. $4,000 is loaded every single month thereafter, and the COVID-19 threat is deemed over on May 12th, 2021. David and his family keep receiving $4,000 on the card every month, regardless of their situation, until May 1st, 2022. In total, David and his family receive $96,000 on the boost card. So let's grade this thing. Category number one is, will it stimulate the economy? For this, I am going to give it a 100 out of 100. This plan will absolutely stimulate the economy. One way or the other, you are putting more money into more people's hands for the longest period of time out of any other plan that I've seen. This will definitely stimulate the economy. It can be argued, though, on the opposite end, that this could have major negative impacts to the economy like hyperinflation and other problems associated with debt that may be true and this may have a net negative impact to stimulating the economy but i can't really quantify those impacts so i'm just taking it on face value as far as the amount of money it puts back into the economy for that stimulating effect category two is it necessary for this i am going to give it a 50 out of 100 the reason being is there is a number of things in this bill that are completely unnecessary millionaires and billionaires are included in this i think that is completely unnecessary it also gives children and adults the same amount of money I don't think that children should be receiving the same amount of money as adults. I think that adults would probably need the money more. So I don't like the $1,000 and $2,000 figure for children. I think that's unnecessary. It gives the full payout regardless of somebody's working or not. So if somebody's still working, making their full salary, maybe sixty dollars or $70,000, they will be receiving additional money every month regardless of that. I don't think that's necessary. 
And this is coming from a guy who's currently working. Would I love this money? I would, but it is not necessary for me to receive it. It is necessary for many other people to receive it. And because of that, I give it a 50 out of 100 for necessity. Is it reasonable, the cost? On this, I am going to give it a 10 out of 100. As far as any other bill, this is the most expensive and cost heavy bill. In the first month alone, it would cost $700 billion to implement this. Every month thereafter would cost $350 billion. And if lasted for two years, it would cost nearly $9 trillion. And this is just one bill. This is not any other bills included supporting small businesses or hospitals or testing or even unemployment. And this is not including the cost of operating the program and the cost of the debit cards and all the individuals that it's going to take to run a program like this. So it's easily going to go over 10, 11, 12 trillion dollars after it's all said and done. So when it comes to reasonable and cost, this is not the highest category for the boost program. Next category, does it incentivize correctly? For this, I am going to give it a 15 out of 100. Certainly it does stimulate the economy but it unfortunately doesn't incentivize in the right way. It does not incentivize anyone to work if they can, which over the long term is a big problem. Those Americans who are working are going to be incentivized to work less, especially if they are in entry-level positions or making minimum or low wages. Some individuals are going to say that's a good thing. These individuals should leave their jobs and they're getting paid way too little money. I am just trying to say that it is not incentivizing people to work. It, in fact, is doing the exact opposite, which could have a major and detrimental impact. It's just the facts. Also, it incentivizes individuals to risk everything to come here illegally. A program like this is written to provide these debit cards to everyone, regardless of their status, taxpayer, non-taxpayer, legal or illegal. Anyone who's living abroad, if this program got passed, would surely do anything they could at that moment to come here. So it's going to incentivize that. Again, it's just a fact. It definitely will happen. Because of those things, I think that you need to relook at how to use this and incentivize with it in a little bit of a better way. Next category, will the plan work as written? For this, I'm giving it a 50 out of 100. Based on the score so far, you may think that I would have given it a lower grade. Clearly as written, I don't think this thing could work. However, it could be argued that direct payments to Americans is the best way to help and quickly stimulate the economy, and that can't be lost in the issue. This bill could be reworked to make it more reasonable and also keep it effective as written. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a 50 out of 100. Can it be done fast? For that, I'm also going to give it a 50 out of 100. You are going to run into a number of problems with implementing a bill like this. How in the world is everyone going to get these debit cards, especially those who aren't listed anywhere with the government? They're going to have to set up sort of stations and give out debit cards to people. You're going to have fraud issues, people stealing them, issues with reloading the debit cards, all kinds of uh, monetary problems where funds are not done correctly. There's going to be a number of problems implementing something like this as far as it going fast. So with all the categories graded and added up, it gives this proposal 275 points out of 600 and a grade of 46% or an F as written. So let's look at the positives, the negatives, and how this bill can be rewritten to make it better. The positives, it does give direct payments to Americans and it can be argued that this is the single best way to help people quickly and effectively. It also will certainly help stimulate the economy. On to the negatives, it is unbelievably expensive and essentially unrealistic. Millionaires and billionaires are included in this bill. Children are given the same amount of benefits as adults in this bill. It will likely cause hyperinflation. Also, it gives money to those who are working and non-working alike in the same amount of benefit. It incentivizes illegal entry into the United States of America. And it also incentivizes individuals in many situations not to work. So with that said, what changes could be made to this bill to make it more reasonable and passable, yet still effective? 
First, I think that you need to make the program for those who are earning up to $100,000 single. And then you can taper off the amount of money that they would get from the program up to $150,000. Anyone earning more than that does not need to be included in this program. If you're filing joint, it can be given to anyone earning up to $200,000 filing joint and tapered off to $300,000. Anyone else making more than $300,000 filing joint should be left out of this program. Children dependents should only receive $500 and it should be capped at three children. Adult dependents should receive the full payout. Payments should be $1,000 per month and $500 per month for the children. Only legal Americans, including green card holders, should be included. I also think it should be limited to three months and then possibly revisited after the three months. With these changes, I think that the boost program becomes more reasonable and still very effective and something that would be passable and work. With those changes though, I'd probably still give it maybe a B or a B minus and then have other individuals offer some more changes that would bring it up in, into an even better category. What are your thoughts? Do you agree with me on this? Leave your comments below. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing to the channel and turning on the notifications. We will catch you guys next time.